once upon a time in a gloomy castle on a lonely hill where there were 13 clocks that wouldn't go, there lived a cold, aggressive duke and his niece, the Princess Sarah Linda. She was warm in every wind and weather, but he was always cold. His hands were as cold as his smile and almost as cold as his heart. He wore gloves when he was asleep, and he wore gloves when he was awake, which made it difficult for him to pick up pins or coins, or the kernels of nuts, or to tear the wings from nightingales. He was six feet four and forty-six, and even colder than he thought he was. He wore a velvet patch, the other glittered through a monocle, which made half his body seem closer to you than the other half. He had lost one eye when he was twelve, for he was fond of peering into nests and lairs in search of birds and animals to maul. One afternoon, a mother shrike had mauled him first. His nights were spent in evil dreams, and his days were given to wicked schemes. Wickedly scheming, he would limp and cackle through the cold corridors of the castle, planning new impossible feats for the suitors of Sarah Linda to perform. He did not wish to give her hand in marriage, since her hand was the only warm hand in the castle. Even the hands of his watch and the hands of all thirteen clocks were frozen. They had all frozen at the same time on a snowy night seven years before, and after that it was always ten minutes to five in the castle. Travelers and mariners would look up at the gloomy castle on the lonely hill and say, Time lies frozen there. It's always then. It's never now. The cold duke was afraid of now, for now has warmth and urgency, and then is dead and buried. Now might bring a certain night of gay and shining courage, but no, the cold duke muttered, the prince will break himself against a new and awful labor, a place too high to reach, a thing too far to find, a burden too heavy to lift. The duke was afraid of now, but he tampered with the clocks to see if they would go out of a strange perversity, praying that they wouldn't. Tinkers and tinkerers and a few wizards who happened by tried to start the clocks with tools or magic words or by shaking them and cursing, but nothing word or ticked. The clocks were dead, and in the end, brooding on it, the duke decided he had murdered time, slain it with his sword, and wiped his bloody blade upon its beard, and left it lying there, bleeding hours and minutes, its springs uncoiled and sprawling, its pendulum disintegrating. Ooh. Let's oh, see how that worked.